chapter 24, entitled Another Envelope. Leon's nine and four quarters day was plummeting fast. Nine, eight, seven. He was so worried about the envelope on the ride home, he didn't even think about his taxi driver collection. The cabbie could have come from Akron, Anaheim, or Antarctica. Leon would never know. He tried to convince himself that the envelope was just a harmless reminder about the upcoming carnival. Only two days earlier, Principal Birdwhistle had mailed out a memo on the mandatory bluntness of swords, but that seemed unlikely. His mom wouldn't have called P.W.'s house unless the news from school was major. Emma Zeisel was pacing back and forth when the taxi pulled up to the hotel. She had the dreaded envelope clutched tight against her breast. Leon stepped out of the taxi and instantly had his worst fears confirmed. The envelope was an exact clone of the one that had torpedoed him the night before school started. It was identical, right down to the blood-red stamp that said, Confidential. Mom, we'll discuss it in the coffee shop, she said. Frau Hafenreffer and Maria were seated at the counter as Emma Zeisel guided her son to their usual booth. Napoleon was standing beside them. What are you doing here? Leon asked his friend. Your mother wished me to come, Monsieur Leon, Napoleon said as he scooched into the booth beside Emma Zeisel. Leon couldn't make heads or tails of the situation. All he could do was stare at the envelope, which now rested accusingly on the tabletop. I've never burdened you with reports from school before, Emma Zeisel told her son. Teachers can be such terrible judges of character, always blowing things out of proportion. But, well, this is different. She pressed her fingernail against the edge of the envelope and gave it a flick. The envelope sailed across the table and poked Leon in the ribs like a needle. Could you read the letter out loud, sweetie? I want everyone to hear. Fine, said Leon bitterly. He grabbed the envelope and fumbled with the flap. Was this about getting flunked? Or was Lily Matisse right? Had Birdwhistle seen him performing doll work? If Birdwhistle had seen him, would he be expelled? Which is worse, Leon asked himself, getting left back or getting booted? Sweetie? Leon removed the single sheet of paper from the envelope. After he squinched and clucked, he read the letter out loud. The classical school where nimble fingers make for nimble minds. Office of the principal, dear Miss Zeisel. Does anybody have a prediction as to what's going to happen? Abigail. Who's got another prediction? Thank you, Abigail. Isaac. Um, I think that it can be a good report letter about how he changed what they felt, how, how the dog are done, and nobody's seen his last girl, so they gave him a news letter about, um, about what they're going to about. It's coming up soon. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, yes, Jackson? Um, I, think, I think he's going to um, answer that letter. Arushi? Kazar? Well, let's find out, all right? Looks like we've got two ideas, getting caught by the principal or maybe he's getting a good report. Dear Miss Seisel, 
When we met in my office last fall, I promised I would touch base later in the school year. At the time, there were concerns expressed about Leon's manual dexterity, and it was proposed that we consider allowing him to repeat fourth grade. Leon stopped reading. They were allowing him to repeat fourth grade? That's like saying they were allowing him to stick sewing needles under his fingernails. Leon, said Emma Zeisel. He continued in an unsteady voice. Since our meeting, I have monitored Leon's work. I am pleased to report that nearly all of his teachers note remarkable improvement in his fine motor skills. Only Miss Hagmeyer has yet to get back in touch with me. The poor woman has been under a bit of stress recently. However, I have every confidence that she will concur with her colleagues. In the meantime, I thought you should know that all indicators point to your son satisfying the requirements of fourth grade. Cordially, Hortensia Birdwhistle, Principal. Emma Zeisel reached over the tabletop and gave Leon a peck on the cheek. Chapeau, exclaimed Napoleon, which is how, the, how French speakers say hats off. Mazel tov, said Frau Hafenreffer. Feliciatones, added Maria. And the letter gave Leon some much needed relief about his teacher. And it was clear Birdwhistle hadn't spotted him, which meant that the secret of the masterpiece was still safe. Emma's eyes all signaled Frau Hafenreffer, who took her cue and disappeared into the kitchen. A minute later, she burst back into the coffee shop carrying a very large platter. Emma Zeisel said, The chip of the month club made a delivery today, sweetie. When I saw that shipment of chips and read the letter from school, well, I put two and two together and decided it equaled surprise party. Leon beamed. It was turning into a nine and four quarters day after all. He gorged on pastries, potato chips, and praise for nearly an hour before an old concern crept into his thoughts. Emma Zeisel picked up on her son's agitation almost before he did. You okay? she asked him. I guess, said Leon. What's the matter? Leon sighed. I still have to pass final inspection. You will, said Emma Zeisel confidently. You don't know the hag. She could still pull a fast one. Uh, don't be silly, dear. What did she say about your masterpiece? Nothing. I never showed it to her. Why not? It's just that a lot's been going on, Leon said vaguely. Well, I'm sure when she gets a load of your masterpiece, she'll flip. We'll see on Monday, said Leon, wondering briefly if he could make his teacher do a somersault. Do you have the doll with you, his mom asked. Leon nodded. Well, show it to everyone. See what they have to say. Leon unpouched the masterpiece and propped it on a bag of Hunky Dory's buffalo flavor, thick and crunchy potato chips. Emma's eyes all glowed with motherly pride as Frau Hafenreffer, Maria, and Napoleon ooed and awed. Maria poked the stain on the doll's dress. You want me to take care of that, Leonito? That's okay, said Leon. It's no problem. I've got this special solution. It works like magic. It's okay, Maria. Thanks anyway. Stain or no stain, said Emma Zeisel. When the hag comes face to face with that doll, she's going to go head over heels. I hope you're right, said Leon. Emma Zeisel picked up a glass of soda and held it in the air. A toast, she declared, to the masterpieces we make. She tipped her glass at the doll, pillowed on the hunky dories. And to the masterpiece we're raising. She redirected the glass at her son. May they both give us joy forever. Leon turned red. Thanks, Mom. But I'm not sure about my masterpiece giving us joy forever. Why not? Well, let's say it does pass final inspection. Which it will, said Emma Zeisel. Fine, said Leon. I still don't get to keep it. Nonsense, Emma Zeisel said. Miss Hagmeyer can't, Mom. Listen to me, Leon interrupted. I know for a fact, once the hag okays an animal, it gets binned, bagged, and sold.